What is up guys and how are you today? Have you ever been confused about the scoring system in golf? Or wondering why the scoreboard has negative numbers in it? Well, let me explain how scores are recorded and by the end of this video, you'll be smarter in golf. So before we get into it, please hit that subscribe button to keep getting more information about everything golf and show your support for this channel. Let me start by saying that golf is a unique sport. While in every other sport, the highest score wins in golf, it is exactly the opposite. However, people further get confused when they see the score as a negative number on the television screen. So let me try and explain. To understand how scoring in golf works, you first need to know what is a par in golf. To put it in a very crude terms, a par is the ideal number of strokes taken to complete a given hole. To understand this better, let's look at the below example. This is a typical golf hole layout where the hole is at a distance of 425 yards from the tee box. A tee box is basically the start position where you hit your first shot for each hole. So in this case, an ideal golfer would take about 4 strokes to hold the ball and hence this hole would be a par 4. So basically, a par is a predefined number assigned to every hole. So just as a ballpark figure, a hole whose distance from the tee box is less than 250 yards would be a par 3. That is, it would take an ideal golfer 3 strokes to hold the ball. A par 4 would be a distance between 250 to 500 yards and more than 500 yards would generally be a par 5. So in professional golf, you mainly have a mix of par 3s, par 4s and par 5s. Take this golf course for an example. It has 18 holes with a mix of par 3s, 4s and 5s. The total of these pars is 72. Hence, we call this a par 72 golf course. So to explain it further, let's put our two golfers Tim and John to play on this par 72 golf course. Our first hole is a par 3 that's 194 yards long. Tim takes 3 strokes to hold the ball while John takes 4. The hole being a par 3, we could say that Tim has made a par while John has taken one additional stroke on a par 3 hole. So we would say John has made a bogey. We will surely get into the golf lingo in my subsequent videos. For now, Let's see how the score is represented on a scorecard. As you may have noticed, on the television, you would not always see the full scorecard, but just the name of the player and against it an E or a positive number or a negative number. So at the end of hole 1, since Tim scored a par, he is even E with the hole and John took an additional stroke. So he has a plus one against his name. Thus, it's important to note that in golf, you are not only playing against other competitors, but you are playing against the course itself. Let's go to the next hole. Hole number two is a par four, 356 yards long. At the second hole, Tim takes three strokes to hold the ball, while John takes four strokes. In this case, John has made a par, as he took four strokes on a hole that's a par four. Tim, however, has taken one stroke less than the par. In this case, we would say, Tim has made a birdie. Let's see the scorecard in this case. So now, even though both the players took the same number of strokes in each of their first two holes, Tim is now minus one and John stays at plus one. I'm sure the smart ones have figured it out why Tim has moved to minus one and John stays at plus one. But still, let me explain. At the end of the first two holes, the players have completed a total of par 7, that is par 3 in the first hole, par 4 for the second hole. And Tim's score is 6, that is Tim is 1 under par. And John's score is 8, John is 1 over par, that is plus 1. Thus, as each hole progresses, you keep track of the performance of each player against par. So at the end of 18 holes, we need to check what is the total score of each player. That is, how many strokes did each player take to complete 18 holes. 
Let's once again see the scorecard at the end of 18 holes. So at the end of 18 holes, the aggregate score of Tim is 68 and that of John is 77. And as I mentioned at the start, the player with the lowest score wins. And when you consider the score against par, that is par 72 at the end of 18 holes, Tim has scored 4 under par, that is minus 4, and John has scored 5 over par, that is plus 5. Hence, Tim is the winner. But wait, the tournament is not over yet. So professional golf tournaments are conducted over 4 rounds, one round each day. Yes, professional golf is played over 4 days. Considering the aggregate score is okay if you are playing just one round. However, keeping track of the aggregate score of players over 4 rounds would be a task considering it goes into triple digits and there would be close to 100 players. But keeping track of score of each player against par becomes much simpler. Let's check the score progress through all 4 rounds. As you can see from the scorecard, it's much easier to keep track of the score against par after each round. In our example, both the players played under par, that is, they both took less than 288 strokes to complete 72 holes over 4 days. With Tim with an aggregate of 280, that is 8 under par, and John with an aggregate of 283, that is 5 under par. Tim wins the tournament as he took 3 strokes less than John. You may imagine a number line with 0 in the center as par or even and negative numbers on the left hand side as under par scores and positive numbers on the right hand side as over par scores. In short, a negative score in golf is good. Hence the tagline of the PGA Tour is live under par. So I hope you've now understood how golf scores are recorded. This was the stroke play format. For ease of understanding, I have not considered the handicaps or stroke index. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can check out my other videos here. So until next time, take care and stay safe.